Hello. I'm going to talk to you today about Touch Cutter, which is a piece of software that I've written inside a better piece of software called Touch Designer. And uh, Touch Cutter is for CNC milling. And presently, it's configured for a Gerbil machine and mines the X carve. So if you have an X carve a thousand millimeters, it'll work exactly, exactly perfect for you. If you have an X carve, uh, the new X carve otherwise, or any Gerbil machine, I think it'll still work, but I'm not really sure. You'll have to troubleshoot whatever comes down the G-code pipe. But we'll get to that in a future video. So let's have uh, a little discussion about Touch Designer. Touch Designer is a really awesome uh, real-time processing program. So it takes information that you put down uh, it's wiring and uh, makes it happen in real time and touch cutter is not a real-time program so the first thing that we do uh, when we get into the touch uh, cutter network is we click the pause button because uh, we don't need any animations or anything playing and then we also turn real-time mode off and this will ensure smooth viewing of the network and uh, good viewer operation Another thing to note is that um, because of the nature of the program, all the operation pretty well happens on RAM. And if you don't need a certain operation, it may not all be calculated by the network. Um, so the final nodes in our network are, are um, the viewers are, are turned off. So Touch Designer isn't going to process them. Until we until we need them in uh, a fewer a few uh, a process further down the pipe, which there aren't any because they're the last nodes, or until we view them. And when we view them, Touch Designer will go unresponsive, and uh, everything will load on RAM. And at this point, it's it's uh, important that you have enough RAM to to handle it. So I've been able to put over 20 gigs into the 3D file that Touch Cutter builds and it would be advised um, to know that going in and if you s anyone can do it like um, but at least have 8 gigs of RAM available so that you can start with a decent uh, 3D shape in size and, uh, and, and, and enjoy what you're doing if but make sure you start very small if you if you're worried about RAM like if you have lots of RAM like if you have 30 40 gigs of RAM then you can be a little more conservative but if you don't start very small probably start smaller than the example I have here and uh, that'll be it so I also want to mention that um, touch designer is a feature rich environment and the type of processing we're doing um, is actually we're using a program to write a program to build programs and that seems pretty what yeah it's a, it's a nested uh, sort of thing but touch designer is an operating system like program it's an environment and it it runs everything every time you cut a g-code file it's essentially a program for your machine to run so that is the uh, the, the one end of the spectrum of programs and uh, touch designer is the other and touch cutters in the middle so touch cutter is the program that you use to make CNC programs and it's made in it's used in the program touch designer okay so now that we've got all that I just want to point out the touch designer is often made to uh, create graphical user interfaces and custom GUIs for the programs that you see in touch designer I don't actually think that's a good idea for this because touch designer is so feature rich in uh, its its native operators that it would be best just to s understand the touch designer operating system the the the, uh, the workflow within touch designer and that will give you 
a lot, a lot of flexibility to how to update your network to uh, create G code programs. Because really, this isn't the program. Touch Cutter isn't so much the program you want, but the the file that your 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 cut wood or your cut piece of material is the the program that you want. So Touch Cutter is the intermediary, and it should be left in Touch Designer user interface as far as I know in the future we may have it set up um, so well that we can put a bunch of GUI on it but for now I think it, it, it makes sense just to uh, split the parts of the operation where it makes sense to split them computationally and so the first split that you should do is open a second uh, instance of touch designer and uh, use that to feed in the touch in session so two session mode and one session mode in one session mode you just run touch cutter and this is a bad idea but it can be done the reason it's a bad idea is because when you go to your G code at the end and you uh, you process a new viewer this will take a very long time to to calculate and during that time everything will be hung and you'll have to stop working you won't be able to fiddle with your next piece. So a better idea is to, and also any other touch-ins and touch-outs that you have going are in jeopardy of crashing. So a better idea is to have this second touch designer going. And this one is watching the third touch designer I have, which is monitoring my uh, CNC on a different computer in uh, the next room, but we'll get to that later. But this is made stable by um, partitioning this from this using the touch in, touch out. So touch cutter has been partitioned from its image source. So you can see this image source and it's locked uh, because what's what's feeding it is now not no longer active and it's locked so I can still keep the uh, uh, what's what's coming in and locks are really really awesome for touch in and touch out especially in a non real time environment like this um, so on the other end the same things going on a touch out is going out and feeding out the third instance of touch designer on the shop computer. Shop computer isn't very powerful. I would not try to do any GPU operations on it or very much with Touch Designer. But um, it running a couple touch ins and touch outs, receiving text and sending video. I can also send audio and video to and from, but I'll, I'll show you that a little more in another video when I go out there. Okay, so that's the general gist of what is Touch Designer. And I think I'll call that a video. And the next video will go over how to use it and run it once. And then I'll go in a third video. And for the touch designer users who want to get in there and fiddle and, and help make this project better and maybe adapt it for um, their machines or, or just learn really about the mechanics of it, can uh, go check it out there. And then I'll maybe make another video about trying to find the others and some updates that I want to do and maybe get some help with. Cool.